Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShot.com, PaintballProps.com, and ElectronicLessons.com. Our most recent Kickstarter campaign ended, and uh, I'm making an assembly video for the rewards. This unit will be up at EngineeringShot.com very soon. This is the HQ Record and Playback module, uh, capable of recording a maximum of uh, 682 seconds uh, at low uh, low audio quality, and a, or a maximum of 341 seconds of audio uh, with high video uh, high audio quality. This, uh, the video manual which talks about that more is linked below. Let's talk about the components. We're going to solder one together piece by piece. Uh, this is the audio chip, 28 pin dip socket, 2 audio jacks, 8 um, momentary push buttons, a 7805 5 volt regulator, a bagged uh, um, uh, oscillator resistor, sampling rate resistor which is talked about in the manual. We're going to use a 47 K ohm uh, resistor to be placed in a certain spot on the board, which will give us a maximum uh, recording duration of 341 seconds at high audio quality. Single pole double throw switch, um, power jack, 5 millimeter um, red LED, 5 jumpers, a 100 K ohm resistor, a 470 ohm resistor, um, sorry. Two 10k ohm resistors, a 390 ohm resistor, three 4.7k ohm resistors, uh, two 1k ohm resistors, five 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitors, one uh, one microfarad electrolytic capacitor, six 2-pin headers, one 10-pin header, a one nanofarad ceramic capacitor labeled 102, a 10 nanofarad ceramic capacitor labeled 103, eight. Uh, 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitors labeled 104 and a 2 pin terminal block. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put everything aside and we're going to solder the resistors in place. The first thing you're going to want to do is segregate your resistors. If you can't read resistor color code just use a multimeter to measure the resistance of each uh, resistor and put them all aside. Segregate them. So again we've got three 4.7k ohm resistors, a 390 ohm resistor, two 10k ohm resistors, resistors um, a 470 ohm resistor, a 100k ohm resistor, two 1k ohm resistors, and your bagged uh, sampling resistor. So now let's have a quick look at the board. Once you have those segregated, follow me with soldering those re these resistors into place. We're going to have a quick close-up of the board showing you where all the resistors are placed. Now keep in mind resistors are not polarized, They've got, they don't have a polarity. They can go in either way as long as they go in the right spots. Okay, starting from the left, we've got a resistor slot labeled right here labeled 390R. 390R rather, that is your 390 ohm resistor. Right here we have a resistor uh, slot labeled 1K, so one of your two 1K ohm resistors will be placed here. Right above it, there is a slot labeled, a resistor slot labeled 100K, so place your single 100K ohm resistor in this slot. Right above that, and just to the right, right here, is an empty resistor slot. It is not labeled. That is where you want to place your bagged, um, your bagged resistor. This is this resistor determines your uh, maximum uh, uh, recording duration versus audio quality. So place your single bagged resistor right here. Just above that, and to the left, there is a 4.7k slot. Place one of your three 4.7k ohm resistors in this slot. Right above that, we have a 10k ohm resistor slot, so 10K. Place one of your two 10K resistors in this slot. Moving over to the right, place your single 470 ohm resistor in this slot right here. It's labeled 470R. To the right of that, there is a resistor slot labeled 1K. Place your other 1K ohm resistor in this slot. Below that, there's another 4.7K ohm slot. Place your second 470 ohm resistor in this slot. Down a bit, Right here, there's another 4.7k ohm slot. Place your final 4.7k ohm resistor in the slot. And down to the left, slightly, is your last resistor. This is where it's labeled 10k. Place your second 10k ohm resistor in this slot. And once we're done that, I'll, uh, we'll come back. You'll see them soldered into the board, and we'll move on to our ceramic capacitors. Okay, now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to segregate your ceramic capacitors. 
the eight 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitors are labeled 104 and they're physically a little bit bigger than the other two. The other two are roughly the same size and you might need uh, a magnifying glass but it's very 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 important that you segregate the two and you know which one's which. The one nanofarad capacitor is labeled 102 whereas the 10 nanofarad capacitor is labeled 103. These uh, 0 0.1 microfarads are uh, are labeled 104. So segregate them and now we're going to look at the board and see where they're going to be placed. Again starting from the left hand side of the board um, there is a slot right, right here labeled 0.1U uh, and it's also labeled CX. Place one of your, four, one of your eight 0 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitors here. Uh, just to the right of that there is another slot labeled 0.1U for 0.1 micro. Place another uh, of your uh, 104s here. Um, here's another capacitor slot labeled 10N, C9 10N, and that is your 103. That is your single 103 capacitor, 10 nanofarads. Just to the right of that, C8 0.1U. You want to place another of your 104s here. C5, just to the right of that, labeled C5 0.1U. Place another of your 104 capacitors here. C2 right here is labeled C2 1N. So then place your single 102 capacitor here. And the rest are all going to be 104s. Uh, place a 104 in C13, labeled C13 0.1U. And below that in this area there's a C7 0.1U, place another 104 there. A C12 0.1U, place another 104 in this slot. And that's it. So let's, I'll solder those into place. And next we're going to concentrate on some of the smaller components. We're going to do the electrolytics a little bit later because they're taller. Uh, we will next be doing um, the switches and the button, or the switch and the button. In this section we're going to solder in our eight momentary buttons and our single single pull throw, double throw switch. Now you'll notice in the middle of the switch there's a notch on one side. If I turn it around, there's no notch on the other side. This uh, component is carefully placed in the REC for record slash PBK for playback slot right here. Now you'll notice on the right hand of the footprint there's a little notch. You want to make sure that the notch on the switch is facing the right side of the board and not facing left. Otherwise, um, when you use the uh, video manual, things are going to get reversed. You're not going to damage anything if you solder this in backwards. It's just going to reverse the record and playback operation. So, make sure that notch is facing right from a bird's eye view. Now the buttons are very, very simple. There's two uh, leads coming out each side. And they go into the S1 through S8 slots. You line up each of the each of the, the, the uh, leads to the holes and they should pop into place. And now what you want to do is with one hand, if, it should stay on its own, but one hand, one finger over a button and solder one of the leads to hold it into place to make sure it's flush. Then solder the remaining four leads, or remaining three leads. So I'm going to populate all of those components and then we will move on to our socket. Okay, in this step we're actually going to do two things. We're going to place the socket and we're also going to place the two audio jacks. The two audio jacks go in this slot right here and this slot right here. Now when you, get, you take your audio jacks out of the foam, make sure that all the leads are straight. Be gentle. They're semi-fragile components. Uh, and when you're soldering them, don't keep the iron on the leads for long, uh, for long periods of time because these are plastic components. Now they fit in quite easily as long as the, um, as long as the leads are straight. They should, you line up the first hole, the, the, first, uh, the first lead in the front, and then the four leads in the back should fall into place. And what I like to do is I like to hold the component down, dab some solder on this hole, and then it should stay in place. Then I can turn the board around and solder the remaining four holes. And I do that with both of the audio connectors. Now the socket has a little notch on the left hand side. You'll notice on the printed circuit board that there's a notch on the left hand side of the, uh, from this perspective. From a bird's eye view, make sure that the notch is facing left. This is going to make, help us make sure that we place our chip properly later on. It should fit nicely into place. What I like to do is take a couple fingers, hold it down, solder this pin, and this pin with just a dab of solder, which will hold it into place. And then I can turn it around, make sure it's still flush, turn the board around, and then solder all of the remaining pads. Make sure there are no shorts. And uh, from next, next, what we'll do is we will do our headers. The headers are simple. There are six two-pin headers, one ten-pin header. The ten-pin header goes right here. 
Uh, short leads facing the bottom, of course long leads facing up, that same goes for all of the headers. Uh, what I like to do typically, I'm going to see if I can show you this without obstructing, so I like to hold it down with my, with my nail, solder one pin on each side using a little dab of solder on the end of my iron, then make sure it's still at 90 degrees, then re then turn it around with the two solder beads in place holding it in, and then re-solder the, or solder the rest of the uh, pads. That's just one way to do it, but that's how, typically how I like to how I like to do it. Same with the, the smaller headers. I use my nail, dab a little bit of solder on one pin, wait for it to cool, turn it around, solder the next pin, and then re-solder the original pin to make sure that there are no cold solder joints. Uh, you will do this as you please, uh, but I will show you uh, a close-up of the board as to where each of these headers go. Ten pin header, uh, two pin header, two pin header, two pin header, two pin header, here as well, here, and lastly, here. Ignore these two pads. Okay, I have to uh, uh, clear up two things. One, there are seven two-pin headers, not six. Um, seven will be included. Here, 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 and here. And as well, uh, in the, at the beginning of the video, I didn't declare the, the microphone. I didn't mention the microphone, and I apologize for that. You'll notice the little slot on the right side of the board. Uh, there's a two-pin uh, two slot here labeled M plus and M minus. Um, and here's the microphone. You'll notice that the leads are towards the left and then there's a large space facing the right. You want to make sure that the large space facing the right faces the right like this so that there's overlap on the board. You don't want to solder it the other way. Uh, otherwise, uh, you'll get the polarity wrong and the mic will hit where the capacitor is supposed to be. Um, another way to notice which one, to know which one is positive and which one is negative, I'm hoping you can see it, is the negative pin has a pad on it that, that stripes out to the outside of the microphone. So the negative pin actually connects um, to the microphone itself uh, and the positive pin doesn't have those three lines uh, connecting it to touch the, the uh, microphone itself. So you want to make sure that the larger section is facing the right. Solder that flush to the board and next we will do our capacitors. You should have six electrolytic capacitors, five 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitors, and one uh, one microfarad electrolytic capacitor. Now, in this specific kit, this one microfarad electrolytic capacitor is physically smaller than the rest of the capacitors, but in your kit, it might be the same size. You need to actually look at the capacitors themselves and and read uh, read the value on them. Now, what you'll notice is there's a, a, a long lead and a short lead. That's because electrolytic capacitors have a polarity. You want to make sure that you, you uh, connect these in the right polarity or else you'll blow up some of these capacitors when you power up the board. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So, uh, long lead is positive, short lead is negative. Now let's have a quick look uh, up close to the board so we can actually see uh, where these capacitors go and the polarities on the board. C16 is our first capacitor. The, the uh, hole facing the bottom of the board has a little tiny plus sign to the left of it. Place your long lead in the bottom hole, short lead in the top hole. Uh, sorry, I have to reach my head around here. C1, right here, also labeled 100U for 100 micro. Uh, there's a plus sign on the bottom hole, right to the left of the bottom hole. So long lead goes there, short lead goes in the top hole. Okay, C4, labeled C4 100U for 100 micro has a uh, the plus sign in the bottom hole, so long lead in the bottom hole, uh, short lead in the top hole. C3 is labeled C3 1U, so you want to place your single 1 microfarad electrolytic capacitor here. Uh, long lead in the bottom hole, because there's a little plus sign to the left of it, and short lead in the top hole. Um, this is your LED spot, we're going to be doing that next, don't worry about that LED for now. Uh, don't confuse it for a uh, capacitor footprint. C7 right here labeled C7 100U. Uh, little plus sign above the left hole. So long lead in the left hole, short lead in the right hole. And uh, C6 100 micro. Uh, long lead in the right hole, short lead in the left hole. There's a little plus sign below the right hole. So solder those all into place. Double check. Look for those little plus signs because plus equals positive equals long lead. Solder them all into place. Next we will uh, solder in our LED and our terminal block.
We are just about done. The LED, similar to the electrolytic capacitor, has a long lead and a short lead. This uh, LED goes in the L1 slot right here. Your long lead goes in the left hole, your short lead goes in the right hole. If you reverse this, uh, your LED won't work, you won't, your circuit will still function, but the LED will not work. So again, long lead in the left hole, short lead in the right hole. Your two pin terminal block has a terminal side and a flat side, uh, a flat side with no terminal. Make sure that your terminals are facing out when you place it in the, uh, in the terminal block slot. It should fit nicely into place, but I can't see from the top of the board. There we go. What I like to do is hold it, hold it down with one finger and dab solder on one pin. Once it's dried, I turn it around, make sure it's still a flush, turn it around, and then uh, solder the other lead, and then re-solder the original lead so you get nice solder joints. Next, we will solder our 7805 and our power jack. The power jack only fits in one way. I've already, re I've already soldered into place, but it only fits in one way. There's three pads, and uh, just make sure that you, uh, you, uh, you don't have the soldering iron on each of the leads for a long period of time because this is another plastic component, but I like to hold it down on the board, dab solder onto one of the three pins, make sure it's connected, let go, it should stay in place, then I like to solder each of them separately, making uh, sure that solder is touching both the uh, component leads and the pads. So uh, a very easy component to solder into place. Now I'm going to turn, turn this around a little bit. And what you'll notice is the 7805, which is our last component before we place the chip, has a front side and a back side that's just grayish white. Notice the, the footprint. There's a white pad on the stri stripe on the back. So we want the black facing the front and the white facing the back. Like that. And what I like to do is I like to bend one of the wires down solder them into place, then cut the wires, making sure that there are no shorts. So I'm going to solder that into place, and next we will place our chip and run a quick test. Remember when we placed the socket with the notch facing the left? You'll also notice that the chip has a notch on the left. So we want to make sure that the notch on the left is facing the left side of the board. Now, this takes some nursing. What I like to do is I like to line up the top holes, or the top pins with the top holes. It's a little bit tricky to do it in front of the camera. Once I do it, just uh, if I once I get them into the place, I don't want to push them down, but I want them resting up against the side. I essentially just want to bend these pins up very carefully until I can feel that it's set. See, it's it just seated itself, uh, and I can actually check by uh, looking at the side of the board, sorry, and making sure that it's it's flat. It's it's uh, sorry, it's flush. So they're actually sitting. Each of the each of the 28 pins are actually sitting in the relative holes, and it's flush. I just felt it seated. I realized that's a little bit difficult to put into words, but hopefully you know what I'm saying. Once you're 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 positive it's seated, what I like to do is take both of my thumbs and just push down nicely into place. And you can double check by looking at the side of the board, ensuring that it's that the chip is sitting nicely in the socket. So let's run a quick test. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of my jumpers and I'm going to connect that to the FIL uh, uh, header and I'm going to take a, a speaker set and I'm going to connect to the SPK pins. I'm going to make sure that the switch is pressed up, that is record, and I'm going to power it up. When I power it up it should beep. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to remove power, set the switch down to playback. And that's that. Thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, check out the video manual linked below. Have a great day.